A brand new slew of documentaries headed by folks from a bunch of organizations and studios and done in the same style and format as what we are used to from the BBC are roaring onto streaming services across small screens in a few months and into the next few years. All of them are fascinating stuff and some contain something special for those prehistory lovers. Let's see what they've got cooking for us. Netflix is heading back into the wild with a major new natural history push. The streamer has ordered six new series, including Our Universe and Life on Our Planet, narrated by Morgan Freeman, and renewed David Attenborough's Our Planet for a second season. It is doubling down on the Our brand with Our Oceans, Our Living World, and Our Water World. The push, headed by Adam Daldeo, VP of Documentary Series, comes after Our Planet was watched by more than 100 million households since its launch in April 2019 and President Barack Obama's Our Great National Parks, launched in April. Our universe blends wildlife footage with cosmic special effects and takes viewers on an adventure to explore the connections that drive our natural world. From the birth of the sun to the birth of a sea turtle, our universe uses animation to dramatize the celestial forces that generated our solar system while using modern camera and CGI technology to highlight the most iconic, charismatic animals on Earth. This could be particularly interesting and rather new information for many. It is easy to say the facts of how just about everything affects everything else in the universe, but to see it visually will be something spectacular. Narrated by Freeman, the six-part series premieres on November 22nd. It is produced by BBC Studios and executive produced by Andrew Cohen with Mike Davis as showrunner. Freeman also narrates what I am no doubt betting you are all here for, Life on Our Planet, the story of life's battle to conquer and survive on planet Earth. It will explore the 99% of Earth's inhabitants lost to the deep past, though I somehow doubt it will do as thorough a job as one could considering that premise. In partnership with Industrial Light and Magic, the series uses the latest technology and science to bring long-extinct creatures back to life. The eight-part series, which will launch in 2023, comes from all three media's Silverback Films and Amblin Television. Dan Tapster, Keith Shuley, Alastair Fothergill are series producers, with Fothergill and Shuley executive producing, alongside Daryl Frank and Justin Falvey. Next up, Our Planet 2, again narrated by Attenborough, will also launch in 2023. From the team behind Planet Earth, it will follow more animals on the move and unravel the mysteries of how and why animals migrate to reveal stories in the natural world. Produced by Silverback Films, the four-part series is executive produced by Alastair Fothergill and Keith Shuley with Hu Corday as series producer. Our oceans will explore the tropical warm waters of the Indian Ocean to the fiery depths of the Atlantic. From the unpredictable waters of the Pacific that are surrounded by a ring of fire to the freezing isolation of the southern and Arctic oceans. Produced by Freeborn Media and Wild Space Productions, the five-part series will launch in 2024 and will be executive produced by James Honeyborn. Jonathan Smith is series producer. Moving on, our living world will feature scientific revelations and footage of the planet's natural networks. Launching in 2024, the four-part series comes from Freeborn Media and Wild Space Productions, with James Honeyborn as executive producer and Ben Roy as series producer. Finally, Our Water World, which launches in 2025, will explore the freshwater systems that help our planet thrive and without which life could not exist, from Earth's icy realms to its rushing rivers and epic waterfalls to magical cloud forests. Freeborn Media and Wild Space Productions produce the five-part series with James Honeyborn as executive producer and Jackie Garbutt as series producer. 
VP of Documentary Series Adam Deldeo said, Nature documentaries can help us explore, discover, and appreciate the wonder and complexities of the world around us. The stories are limitless, spanning the arc of history from the Earth's earliest origins to the environments we live in now to the planet we are creating for the future. With stunning filmmaking and innovative technologies, these cinematic documentaries bring even the most exotic or microscopic creatures of the natural world to our fingertips. With the tremendous success of Apple TV's Prehistoric Planet, in a similar way to BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs, execs are seeing the potential for education and pocket lining in large-scale, high-budget documentaries featuring prehistoric life. Though there will undoubtedly be plenty of dinosaur documentaries in the future that contain abhorrent CGI dinosaurs puppeted by underpaid workers who don't really have any idea how dinosaurs should move, we are also seeing proof and hearing rumors of a shift going on behind the scenes in the documentary making spheres. A move towards more and more and better and better quality, bringing the paleo art we have obsessed over for the last decade to life in breathtaking detail. I am sure you have seen the trailer for Life on Our Planet by now, with what few glimpses we can see of the prehistoric life showcased in the series, we have something that is perhaps chunkier in scope than prehistoric planet, but seems a tad behind in minor details about the anatomy of some of these beasts, at least according to the army of keyboard warriors, armchair experts, and even full experts as well. Let's take a look at each of the species so far confirmed to appear and see how well they adhere to what is known of them from their fossils. I won't bother going through the trailer creatures in order like I did with Prehistoric Planet because they don't show up over and over again. Arthropleura Arthropleura is one of, if not the largest land-living invertebrate to ever live. They were members of the millipede group and could reach more than 8 feet 2 inches, 2.5 meters in length. They were one of the many bug stars of the Carboniferous period, a time from 358 to 298 million years ago that saw the world engulfed in forests. The clip we see in the trailer seems to show two Arthropleura caressing one another, like the thoughtless dirt and bark eating cuties they probably were. Nothing here seems to be particularly off, but they are only shown for like a few seconds. Hopefully their inclusion in the trailer means we will be getting an entire episode dedicated to the Carboniferous, because we are sorely lacking in media materials on that extremely interesting and important period of time. Dromaeosaur There's a clip of a small dromaeosaurian theropod dinosaur gliding in the air. The angle does not allow a particularly great view of the wings to see if they provided the appropriate number of feathers. From my non-expert observation, they almost seem as though they could be a tad short or missing some parts of the wing, but I don't want to jump to that conclusion yet, especially when there was no doubt plenty of paleontological consultants on this thing. I cannot tell which dromaeosaur this guy is, but its colors and the leg feathers seem to suggest Anchiornis. If it is Anchiornis, then my admittedly premature observations of the weird wings may be intended, as Anchiornis had longer feathers near its wrist, with the middle section of the wing being the broadest. Its inclusion may indicate an episode about Lake Jurassic China, the evolution of birds in flight, or simply feathered dinosaurs. Ornithopod there's some type of ornithopod dinosaur here too. My immediate guess is that it's Myasaura due to the crest above the brow. Many older depictions of the good mother lizard erroneously reconstructed the nubs above the eyes as twin pointed hornlets, whereas the fossils actually show a bar or unibrow like crest that went across the brow. These guys were brachylophosaurs, meaning they had a huge broad schnoz, beak, and jaws. They were not the slenderer jawed and elaborately crested hadrosaurs like Parasaurolophus and such. Their inclusion may mean an episode centered around dinosaur babies, Cretaceous North America, or specifically Cretaceous Canada. Sauropod There's a split second shot of some sauropods in a lake. Oof, sex lakes are back, folks. I've personally outgrown my instinctual dislike of seeing sauropods in water only because it makes sense practically. They would have entered the water at some point, like most living things. I cannot really tell what kind of sauropod dinosaurs these critters are, 
but I want to think they are titanosaurs. However, considering the time-hopping motif of the rest of the trailer, they could just as well be Jurassic Diplodocids. They do have relatively slender necks and tails, which is not exactly characteristic of the titanosaurs. Smilodon Only one animal features twice in the trailer, Smilodon. I have been biased and spoiled by the onslaught of beautiful depictions of the Sabercats by Fred Wyram, Arturo Garcia, Benjamin, Leon Reynoso, Langlois, and Mauricio Anton. As such, there's something a tad off about these cats to me. I cannot quite put my finger on it yet, but it may be how dark the markings on their bodies are, and the weird bison-y, hyena-y neck and shoulder fur. Thankfully, I talked with someone who is more well-versed in the specifics of Smilodon anatomy, Benjamin Leon Reynoso Langlois. This is what he said. The lower front teeth are too reminiscent of Panthera species rather than Smilodon, as their lower front teeth are all nearly the same height. The Smilodon faces are a bit too wide, have slipped canines. In other words, they are a tad too long. Their chins are a tad small, as Smilodon and Homotherium had chad chins. These seem to have shorter upper lips than needed. Unnecessarily opaque spots if it's the Populator species and a weird fur texture, though it could just be me. But the fur doesn't look all that convincing, especially in the face. I can see where Benjamin is coming from about the fur, but the fur on the shoulders does look almost photorealistic to me. Titanus there will also be a Titanus featured in this episode as we catch a glimpse of Smilodon stalking it. Titanus was the only terror bird to make it into North America and thrive here. Though not the largest terror bird to ever live, they were very successful and no doubt a fearsome animal to be respected. Unfortunately, the sound designers or trailer editors were not given enough respect as they resorted to using a pig squeal for the Titanus cry, and it is painfully obvious, a very overused sound effect. But I also have an ear for sound effects and I'm particular about them, so it's probably just me. Nothing looks particularly off about the bird. In fact, it has really good looking wings that usually get the short end of the design stick in most other instances in which the animal appears. Woolly Mammoth We also get a quick glimpse of woolly mammoths with the title card. Nothing seems super off here, but I'm no elephant expert. They look like most modern depictions. Hopefully they don't include the myth or meme of the trunk mitten. The inclusion of Smilodon, Titanus, and Mammoths suggests at least a Pleistocene episode, but it would be even cooler if the Smilodon and Titanus were part of an episode about South American Pleistocene megafauna migrating into North America, with the woolly mammoth being in its own episode. Tyrannosaurus The best was saved for last, Tyrannosaurus. We even get a few different clips of it. Though not as instantly memeable or empathetic as Hank from Prehistoric Planet, these Tyrannosauruses look pretty damn good. Some eagle-eyed viewers have noted that the proportion of the eyes are different between this Tyrannosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus from Prehistoric Planet, and it definitely seems so to me. Tyrannosaurus had enormous eyeballs, some of the largest of any terrestrial animal ever, but they were small in comparison to its skull. They should really look small on the head and especially from far away. The prehistoric planet Tyrannosaurus had seemingly large eyeballs, but due to all those involved with that series and all the research done for it, it seems to me that eyeballs may have been slightly variable in direct size, especially when the animal was alive and had skin, fat muscles, tendons, and eyelids covering the eyeball. I think I like the color scheme of the prehistoric planet Tyrannosaurus better, but perhaps some might find this Tyrannosaurus more plausible in being more drab and earthy. The tongue looks particularly interesting as it looks like a crocodilian's. Not much mobility. This has been discussed quite a bit among experts. Did Tyrannosaurus have a bird-like or croc-like tongue? Since no hyoid or tongue bones have been found of Tyrannosaurus, it remains a tad speculative or hypothetical. A more muscular tongue makes more sense since crocs are specialized for their niche and have special tongues for their special lifestyles. These Tyrannosauruses also seem to have less obvious keratin sheaths, bumps, ridges, and hornlets on their skulls. Instead, it's a bunch of scales and lower keratinized pads that more closely follows the outline of the skull. 
All in all, they seem like a safer reconstruction than the slightly more speculative one of Prehistoric Planet. It will be interesting to see how it all plays out when the series comes out, and how people react. Unfortunately, the sound design for the trailer was also messed up big time here, with a Jurassic Park roar instead of whatever original sounds they hopefully make in the final product. So that's it. I cannot wait to see the documentary series when it comes out. I will be getting back to the accuracy reviews of Prehistoric Planet so that I can hopefully do the same for life on our planet when it comes out. What do you think? Are you excited? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, if you liked what you see here, give me a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and please click the bell icon to keep up to date with the channel. It seems that the algorithm is messing with my content and not sending out notifications for every video to every subscriber. I don't know. I don't make the rules. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman, 